Hello, in this video I'm going to paint this imaginary seascape with cliffs in the sea. It's all done in pretty much one wash. Took me about 20 minutes and the video plays back at double speed so that you can see me painting it in under 10 minutes. I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. I start by drawing the horizon line and then the cliffs. Just a few simple shapes. I want them to cascade away into the distance and then I have a little cliff that sort of stands out by its own just to add a bit more visual interest. And then I draw the foreground to some big rocks that are jutting into the ocean and I want to create sort of an O-shaped composition so that the eye can travel around the page. Just a few lines where I think the shadows might go for those rocks and that it doesn't become too much of an empty space. And that's really it for a drawing. Nice and simple. Next I'm going to wet the sky with some clear water and I make sure that I leave some white gaps just so that the clouds get a bit more interest in it and it's not just one big solid wash. I use a very limited palette for this little sketch. I start with indigo as my dominant blue color and then I've got perylene violet which is a Daniel Smith mix color meaning it has a few pigments in there to make up this color and I start with that violet color as the edge of the clouds and then I drop in the indigo at the top. I'm aiming for just a stormy sky that is kind of a counterbalance to the cliffs so filling up that top left corner and then I use some raw sienna which is easily my favorite color as I use it all the time as a base wash and add a bit of warmth around the edges of the clouds and also in that top left corner which is where the light is coming from in, in my mind and it's quite common to sort of have the light source on the top left that sort of feels easy and natural to read and then as you can see I'm painting the tops of the cliffs there I want to make a connection between the clouds and the cliffs so that that's not too harsh of a border between the two and while I've got this raw sienna mix I'm going to do the foreground rocks which are a bit warmer so that I do be in contrast of the cooler background the dark blue sky and the cliffs as well and you can see I'm sort of mixing colors in quite freely I don't often use pure pigments I always make sure that there's some other color in there I've added a bit of burnt sienna to the indigo now that gives me a more of a gray dark gray than just indigo and here is where I paint the first layer of those cliffs. I'm probably not going to do much more on those cliffs, uh, maybe some darks and a few strokes for texture. So I try and get them right in the first pass as much as I can, which is a general rule I follow. I try and touch painted areas as little as possible, so as much as I can, I get them right with one wash. And if that means adding a bit more pigment to my first layer, then that's okay. And I'm leaving the bottom of the cliffs here quite irregular. I want to create a sense of the water crashing against those cliffs in the distance. So I'm just leaving some white edges at the bottom of that. And here is exactly what I just said. I'm going to add in a bit of darker pigment so that I don't have to go over them um, too many times and that also creates a bit of more variation in texture in there and I've just lifted out a little bit of pigment at the bottom there because usually when there's water crashing against rocks there's some mist and some fog kind of that covers the base of that and that again acts with the illusion of those cliffs being in the far distance. That third cliff there in the middle of the page is um, a fair bit lighter than the other cliffs just to create that sense of depth and making sure that the eye sort of gets pulled into the painting and off away into the distance. I added a few more light clouds towards the horizon with my raw sienna mix because the white would be too stark. It's not that bright of a day. And then I'm going to 
come back to the foreground rocks they're still a bit wet so it's a good time now to drop in some darker pigment again just to get some variations in there and indicate where the shadows might be especially in those smaller paintings like this one I try and paint as much as I can wet and wet without having to dry layers in between and because they're quite small and there's not a lot of water on the page a part of the painting dry while I work on others so the foreground rocks were kind of half dried by the time I got back to them and now the sky and the cliffs will be in a almost dry state but still a little bit wet that I can continue to work on them if I have to but I've moved on to the ocean now so I've taken a stronger mix of my indigo made sure the brush was relatively dry before I put it down on the page because I want to have that dry brush effect with it breaking off and indicate that there are waves. It's a bit hard to see because my hand's obviously in the way there, apologies for that, but you can kind of see that I just draw my brush, push it quite hard down on the page and draw it from right to left because I want the pigment to break up towards the left side. And now I'm gonna take a bit of a lighter um, version of that indigo, just a tiny bit more water in there and then sort of add a bit of shadows within the waves themselves just to get that sense of crashing waves and they're tumbling over each other. Now I'm adding a bit of burnt sienna again to my indigo to get a darker grey to paint in those middle ground rocks that are jutting out of the water. And again I'm trying to leave the bottom edge quite rough because I want it to look like the water is kind of crashing around them and pouring over them. So just a few simple marks there. Always hard not to overthink it, especially when it's such a small little painting. Every brush mark really counts and will become visible. In a much bigger painting, you can hide things away or go over them again or make them a little bit bigger if you got an edge wrong. But when you work at its small scale, it's almost harder, um, but obviously faster and easier to redo them. I'm just tinkering a little bit now. Um, I'm getting very close to the end. There's not a lot left to do except for the shadows in the foreground rocks and that's what I'm mixing a really strong dark with burnt sienna and indigo make it a really thick pasty pigment and now I'm just dropping in some shadows at the base. And at this point you just got to follow your own painting. Like if you paint off a photo reference or uh, from real life, you can't look too much about what's in front of you now. You really have to look at what the rocks are on your painting and where it makes sense to add a shadow and where you've already got some shadows happening because that's the way the paint flows. So it's really important not to force anything on them, but really follow the lines that are already there. That makes it a much more believable. And even if the rocks look very different from your reference. This is a painting I've kind of done out of my memory. So it's pretty simple, um, but I don't have a reference to look at. So I'm just really painting from experience and from memory here. And you can probably tell but I think it makes um, the impression of rocks in the foreground. I'm just adding a bit of texture. I always like to add a bit of water and some splatters, especially to rocks. Rocks can't have enough textures really. So you can't go wrong there. And, and I also like doing it. It's probably one of my favorite parts of a painting is to add texture. And now I'm just adding a few more details. And I decided that that gap there at the right side above the horizon is a bit too empty there's really nothing happening and i want the eye to sort of keep circling around so i've decided to paint in a little island in the in the far distance that's sort of an echo of those cliffs and now i'm just adding a few small dots there to indicate that there's some birds hovering above those cliffs reminiscent of the Galapagos Islands and uh, other ocean scenes I've seen with lots and lots of birds. They just add a bit of movement and a bit of life to it and a bit more interest. And you only need one or two of those to actually look like birds and the rest can just be black dots. And now to finish it off, I just use a bit of white gouache on a toothbrush because that gives me really fine splatters. And we're really finished. That was it. Um, removing the tape. 
just to see it with nice clean edges and there we have it cliffs in the sea hope you enjoyed that one and thanks for watching